it's a lot of other kids that have since grown into adulthood or you know kids or teenagers that are within the system and a lot of people are still harboring pain from from the past and from being placed in foster care including myself in certain ways after this unpleasant place that me and my two siblings were placed in well we tried to escape but i'll talk about that in another video after this home we were then separated my two siblings all of us were girls my two siblings they went somewhere together they went to a home together but i was alone and i don't know why they did it like that but again the way that i was i just went with the flow i didn't really ask many questions on the inside i was very scared but i just played it very cool and I really don't even know how I contained that because now if I was being taken somewhere that I didn't know I would be freaking out when I arrived at the place that I was put it was a establishment almost it was like a um a boarding house or something you know I don't know where it was or nothing I was young so all I do remember about this place was my window was like you can directly see the entrance of the place and i would just stare out there a lot of times but one huge thing that i remember seeing out that same window was i believe that it was a visitation situation and you know sometimes the parents were able to pick up their kids and spend some time or you know whatever so they had to be dropped back off but from my window i could see the whole ordeal going down and you know the kid is basically getting ripped from the parent and it was very sad to see however i don't really remember being very sad i remember being sad on the inside right but i never showed it i never really cried when anybody was up moving around I saved that for the nighttime, you know. I saved all of my emotion and my anguish and how I felt about where I was. I kept it on the inside and I saved it for the nighttime. Again, that's back to the half and half thing because I felt like I I needed to use that time to just be grateful to be grateful to be able to sleep and to not have to deal with or see certain things so i used it for that and i took it as a positive thing for that and for that only i i felt a certain stress because i didn't know where my siblings were i didn't know if they were happy that was the first time that we were apart as well um we had always just been like glue all four of us so it was a very foreign like thing and situation to be put in but i understood you know to a certain degree why we were put in that situation and why we were placed in false again what i also used this experience for and i didn't even realize it until you know years later is I helped a lot of those kids like even if it was in the moment and I was a kid too but I felt like I was good at consoling people so that's what I did you know and I felt like they were feeling like those kids were feeling more pain you know of being distant from my parents from our parents from their parents and I felt that too but at the same time you know i knew that they had to prove that they were fit to take care of us like i knew that much that's that's the only thing that i knew i didn't know how long that it was going to take for them to do that 
I didn't know, you know, if we was going to be there for the rest of our lives or whatever. But they were really in pain about it. They were really emotional. So I just felt like if I could calm them down a little bit, I would feel a little bit better. And it did make me feel a little bit if better. If you guys don't know, when you are placed in foster care, your parent or guardian, whoever is legally in charge of taking care of you, has to go through certain steps to become fit in the state's eyes. Well, I believe the process takes a year, or, you know, give or take a year, and we were placed back in the custody of our parents and i was very um i was very happy about that because you know i knew that my mom was going through it you know i i knew that you know with the heart that she had and with the heart that she has i knew that it was something that that would be troubling her we were placed back in the custody of you know who are parents and I look back on the experience like I wouldn't change it because sometimes people have to and most of the time parents have to be put in certain positions because they aren't thinking about the livelihood of their children and you know you may not be thinking that you're not thinking about you know the livelihood of your kids when you do things like that but but you are putting their lives in jeopardy and our lives were in jeopardy although nothing happened you know i see the errors and i don't blame whoever reported them because you know i feel like it had to happen and um you know by the grace of god she got everything together and in order to get us back because a lot of times when kids are placed into foster care a number of things happen you know parents get comfortable with that situation and they don't want to fight for their kids you know i've seen that a lot that didn't happen in my situation which told me a lot about my mom you know told me a lot about the lengths that she would go to to, to get us back so I respected that a lot of times when kids are placed into foster care they are fondled with and they are molested and I thank God that that didn't happen to me or to my siblings I thank God because Lord knows how I would be or you know how I would have turned out thus far something like that can be very detrimental to your mental state and to you know just your overall health and how you take care of yourself and how you handle situations so I'm glad that that didn't happen looking back on my childhood there was a lot that we came back to that didn't change so I really felt like it was nothing that could happen to change my environment and my my living situation in the house you know and how toxic it was and how much abuse both physical and verbal I've spoken on you know the troubles that are still currently going on in my house and I have no problem with doing that because I want people to understand why I do what I do, why I speak how I speak, the passion behind my voice. I'm trying to desperately escape my environment. I've always been in this environment and thank God that, you know, I didn't let it fully consume me. I do have my times where the people around me or, you know, the shit that goes down really puts me in a negative space but i always climb out of that bottom line if you have gone through a similar situation as me just know that you are not alone you know like michael jackson said you are not alone i am here with you though you are far away i am here to stay or you know whatever the biggest thing that i learned from going through this scenario and this situation and that hard time was that number one i can prevail through 
anything. I can make the best of any situation. And sometimes I forget that. But looking back on being in foster care and moving the way that I moved, I feel like I can do just about anything. I was that kid, you know? And a lot of people didn't think that I was that kid because I didn't speak on anything that went on in my household. You know, out of respect. And most of the time, it was out of fear of what would happen to me. There was a lot of things that, that I feared, you know, as far as just speaking the truth and getting that stress and weight off of my shoulders. So I feel good to, to actually talk about it and really just vent to y'all and tell y'all of another experience that I've been through that a lot of people have went through, you know. If you were that kid, just know, you know, I feel your pain, I feel your growth, I feel inspiration to not put my child in that situation, you know, that's the bottom line to it, and that's how I take it now, you know, I just want to be better and, and not put her in those situations that I was put in, and, and the things that I seen, and and the things that I heard, I just want to block all of that out, but have her still be in reality, if that makes sense. With all of that being said, thank y'all for hearing me out. Thank y'all for tuning in to yet another video. It's your girl, B. Octavia, and if you want to see more story times of me speaking on my past or just speaking on anything, let me know what you want me to speak on, and just let me know that y'all want me to drop more, and I will, you know. So, I will see y'all in my next video.